gonna try and get to somewhere that's not really scooter accessible. Oak Brook is uh, on 290 22nd Street and like Kingery Highway, Route 53. At this intersection that's just pretty nuts. We'll see if we can do it. I can get to Yorktown Mall, which is kind of nearby. We'll try. But yeah, I'm trying to figure out like what people, like what I could do for a channel, a YouTube channel. It's that a lot of my subscribers, some people have even commented and said, I'm just interested in buying a scooter or getting an idea of what it's actually like to own one. And that's cool. I'm happy to answer questions if somebody has questions. You know, somebody asked me the other day, do I regret getting a 50cc versus a 125cc? And the answer is no, I don't really, I don't have any regret about buying this thing. Do you ever find yourself, you know, wanting more power or displacement or whatever you want to call it? And the answer is yes and no. So the, the quick answer is when I was shopping for a scooter, coronavirus had just hit, I turned in my car lease, and I was just happy to not have a car payment. You know, it doesn't really like affect me that much to uh, drive a scooter instead of a car because it's summer and you know, things are good. You know, I can share a car with my wife, whatever. Now his question was pertaining to, did you want more, you know, kick from your vehicle? Don't you wish you could go a little faster? And yeah, I do honestly wish that I could go a little faster. But I wouldn't say that that wish or desire to go faster results in regret, you know? I don't regret making this purchase because this was uh, brand new. These, these, the sticker price is $2,600. You could probably get it lower. I got it lower. But, you know, the sticker price was $2,600 and, and then the $125 was like $3,300 or $3,500. So it's like $1,000 more. Let's just say it's $1,000 more for a 125 cc instead of a 50 cc now i don't really regret it because i don't have the motorcycle license and i'm kind of constrained on time and when coronavirus hit you know i turned in that car lease and i was like i don't really have time not only do i have not have time because i'm fixing my business and stuff not only do i not have time to go get that motorcycle license but at the same time, the Illinois classes for motorcycle licenses weren't like taking place. The DMV wasn't open, all that stuff. So I think that there's like a $20 class here in Illinois that you can take um, over the course of a weekend. I believe it's two days and, and it, you just walk in or you schedule yourself and you know they provide the motorcycles. It's, they do it over two days and then they have the DMV instructor right there, there you know? So I wanted to do that because that's what my dad did and I think my brother did a similar thing. And I just figure, you know, you take the class, they're gonna teach you, and then at the end of the class, you take the test right there in the class and you get your license. You just go to the DMV and you get your license. Those classes were closed. So that's why I didn't end up getting the 125 or 250. You know, to be perfectly honest, I've driven my dad's 250cc Aprilla, and I find that scooter to be very nice. Um, I think that scooter, brand new, was like six or seven thousand dollars. So, you know, it's not like a cheap scooter. It's a very nice scooter, and it can get onto the highways at 70. You know, up to 70. He probably, I think that he last told me, you know, it cruises nicely in 55, 60. Um, but yeah, you can theoretically get it up to 70. I would really rather be driving something like that, um, a 70 uh, mile an hour vehicle. See, because I'm going to run into some tension here, um, people trying to pass me and whatever. But I don't really mind the 50cc. You know, the cheap, the cheapness of the device, it's $1,000 cheaper. You don't need to do that motorcycle class. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, a higher insurance. You also get a little bit better miles per gallon. So I believe the 125cc Zuma is going to, you know, do like 80 or 90 miles per gallon. And this one's 130. So is that a major difference? No, because they're all so much more economical than your normal car. I'm trying to let people go around me. See, everybody's like, wants to ride on this road like a million miles per hour. 
and uh, I can technically be on this road you know it's just you know whatever honestly it's not even that big of a convenience maybe when you're in like your car you feel like it's a big inconvenience but when you're on a scooter you can you can physically see the people that are passing you um, they're not really like any later to their destination you know so does it inhibit me or prohibit me from going where I want to go by having a 50 cc versus a 125 cc no not really you know people are just gonna go around you you're just gonna be a minor inconvenience the only thing I would say is from a safety perspective you probably do want to travel a little bit faster but it's not the end of the world you know it's like I can do it I don't regret it and now that I'm kind of stuck with the 50 cc I've thought about upgrading it's like okay I could trade this guy in right I could trade my 50 cc in and I can get the 125 but I'm gonna take some loss on the I'm gonna get over because there's a semi behind me I could take a loss on the trade and you know trade up and whatever because I can do the Kelly Blue Buck on this is like 1900 so I would lose a little bit and then I would uh, you know buy the buy the um, you know 125 cc I, I just you know right now I'm kind of in the money saving mode so I think I'm just gonna live with it and just kind of like eat it you know like I can only go so fast it's 35, 40 miles an hour. It's not the end of the world. It's not gonna kill me, hopefully. And if it does kill me, I've got the insurance. So, you know, I would say if you can spare the time and if you can find the um, time to do the class and get your motorcycle license, then yeah, just go straight ahead right on to the 125 or 250 cc. Cause I think the 50 cc it does have limitations but it's not big enough to I don't know it just it just really depends on how much money you want to save you know like I'm a big frugal sort of guy even though you see me in a couple videos going to Starbucks and getting fast food you know for the most part I live pretty frugal I probably spend way less than your average American by a landslide and um, you know I'm just gonna say that by and large because of my frugality or my frugalness um, because I'm so frugal you know I don't really mind driving slower uh, that 125 cc versus 50 cc I don't really care you know it's like I've saved the thousand dollars and now that I'm in it it's like if I trade up I'm I'm gonna have to just start all over again like I'll have another thousand dollars in the hole and whatever this is paid off you know this is paid off and I don't have to worry about, you know, a class or payments or higher insurance. It's a done deal. And the 50cc, they have really high resale values, you know. So I don't really foresee this being a bad decision. Even if you get your 50cc and you end up regretting it, you know, I don't. Because I just live with it, you know, all these people are going faster. But it's like, you're going to get there two minutes faster, or, you know, you're going to get there a couple minutes faster. So what? You know, it's not really a big deal to me. And, uh, you know, there's, I was also talking in my response to this guy, like, there's something about creatively limiting yourself. You know, right now I'm going down Kingery, which I normally would not do. Um, but you can see the, the speed limit is 45. So in theory, all these people are driving way too fast, right? But in practice, in Chicago, people are just gonna drive the way that they drive in Chicago, which is 10 to 20 miles over. You know, most people on, on this road are gonna drive 55 to 60. That's just the reality of living in a major city, especially Chicago. I was telling the guy that there's something to artificially limiting yourself. If you artificially restrain yourself, that's where creativity and your um, your, your muscles, your, your creative imaginatory muscles like come into play, you know? Because let's say you just put an artificial restraint that you can only paint on a, you know, five by five canvas. Well, you really have to like work your imagination a little bit to get more out of that five by five canvas versus if you have a 
12 by 12 canvas or a 30 by 30 canvas or whatever they make you know that that size limitation uh, on the canvas is gonna restrict the painter with their brush we do this all the time with like business and economics and just so many different ways where we maximize for efficiency or we maximize for a certain scenario you know there's there's nothing really wrong with um, you know limiting yourself artificially it's kind of a creative process because you end up in a scenario where you got to force yourself to take more creative routes you get more intimately familiar with your surroundings you um, just have to do things differently like I don't have a full trunk right I only have this little cargo space in the um, under the seat and that forces you when you go grocery shopping or when you go places okay I've only got so much space I can only do so much stuff look it's my wife it's my wife and maybe it's my little baby so I don't really think the scooter's a bad um, thing hello hello who <laughs> do you miss do you know who I am do you remember there they go little trip to the mall I was talking about having like artificial restraints and how that can make you more creative and not just more creative but it can also be more fun so the guy that I was commenting with he mentioned how it can be sometimes more fun to travel by a 50 cc just because you have that limitation and you've got to route yourself differently like that's half the fun in owning them so I could totally see that um, mostly I just view it as like a sunk cost right because I've already like purchased the 50cc I'm not gonna go and trade up um, because I would be losing a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars most likely and I don't really have time to take two days for these classes and then um, you know do that although I would really like to so going in if I could do it all over I mean I've been meaning to get my motorcycle license for like two three five years like a long time and I've just never had a chance right but um, I had a friend a while ago that wanted to do it with me and we just never did it and um, I was actually right by one of the class testing points um, downtown in Chicago right by my office so I mean it's not like I don't want to say I haven't had the opportunity I've had probably the opportunity I've just never made time for it I don't want to drive down Kingery I want to take a different route back home because Kingery when it's getting a little dark and people are gonna drive the way that they drive so I'm gonna go this way and then go over on Cass should be a little bit safer so yeah I mean why would you regret it you you'd basically regret it because you feel like you can't get onto the interstate um, I don't know if I would want to drive a 125 cc on the interstate e anyways right like will it will it get you to 55 yeah but most people in Chicago on the interstate are gonna be going 70 even a 250 cc on the interstate is gonna be kind of you know iffy I would say um, it's just it, it might do fine um, I don't know I've never personally done it but I would prefer probably a little bit more than 250 if I'm gonna be on the interstate to be honest with you just because I know how I drive on the interstate and how people around here in Chicago drive on the interstate so you know I'm not again now we're kind of like once you go past 250 CC now you're kind of in this arena where it's like well hey just get like you know a big bike right um, I don't know I like I like the idea just the idea of a smaller more limited bike because you don't put yourself in that temptation and those limita uh, those limitations not only have like a creative aspect like oh I've got to see I'm taking a different route right now than I normally would in a car or a bigger vehicle this is like part of that creative process you're just a little bit more aware of your surroundings a little bit more aware of uh, how you got to navigate I don't really want the temptation of like speeding either on the 50 cc like I think you can um, pretty much say you're never almost never gonna get a speeding ticket right like the most you can do is speed in a 25 mile an hour 
or like a hospital zone like there's not a lot of places where you can speed right school zone but even in those because you're on such a small vehicle you're gonna be able to get away with a lot you know people just are gonna leave you alone um, for the most part at least that's been my experience like with this I've been able to park it in places that I wouldn't normally park just because it's so tiny you know people look at it and they're like it's almost a bicycle you know so I don't know I think once you get a 125 cc it's gonna be a little bit longer it's gonna be a little bit bigger and it's just gonna you know it's gonna be more of a motorcycle right and even though it's technically a scooter I think with a 50 cc people just kind of visually see it as barely barely transportation so if you park it on the sidewalk or like the yellow lines or you know just somewhere where it's not technically a parking spot like the grass people probably aren't gonna care people are gonna you know give you a little bit more space on the road because you're just such a small vehicle and I don't know like there's there's some nice things about the 50 cc in terms of regret the only way that I would regret this is if it like broke down and I didn't get at least 10,000 miles out of it um, I think if I get 10,000 miles out of it then it was probably worth the money but to be honest I think I should get way more than that because I'm already at 1100 1200 and um, you know I just foresee this thing lasting you know over 30,000 miles if I can help it and and there's also this thing like uh, in my mind at least you think about pricing right when you when you think about an, an amount of money that's over 3,000 at least when I think about an amount of money that's over 3,000 I think to myself wow three thousand dollars is a, still a good chunk of change right it's not it's not like nothing right but I would say under three thousand dollars under three thousand dollars most people no matter how much you make can can manage that amount so to me and it might just be because of my income level and the level of my business revenue and all these things you know three thousand dollars is kind of where I start to go hmm that's a lot of money you know um, at a thousand dollars I'm like yeah it's 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 a lot but for a scooter you know or for a vehicle you know so I kind of think about it like this like I'm shopping for a motorcycle or a scooter and I see two thousand dollars and I go okay two thousand dollars I can do but then I see thirty three hundred dollars for a 125 cc and I'm like all right now we're kind of in the range where that 125 cc is competing with a used car right because I could get a used car that's somewhat reasonable and somewhat okay at the four to five thousand dollar mark right so I kind of view it like this if I'm gonna spend thirty three hundred thirty five hundred dollars without you know tax and stuff on a 125 cc then I may as well just go get a used car at least in my opinion you know there's a fun factor and there's like having fun on your bike but I'm using it for like practical transportation and so when I think about it in terms of like practical transportation and getting around you know I think okay me and my wife share you know a used Toyota Corolla which you could probably buy for five thousand six thousand bucks you know somewhere in the four to six thousand dollar range depending on the mileage and you know I I may as well just get and I actually was looking at this I was looking at a used car with, that was basically my wife's car but a little bit um, nicer maybe a little bit less mileage and, and leather and I think a newer model like a newer year and I was thinking about it and that would have been like eight or nine thousand and I was like yeah you know this will just get us around a little bit longer but I don't know I'm kind of like shopping for practicality you know and and I just think like man nine thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars and I'm gonna pay that off over let's say 48 months and I'm gonna do forty dollars a week or whatever I'm gonna do you know cuz I budget on a weekly time basis uh, I just think you know with the scooter I can get that paid off a heck of a lot faster I can you know like just get around on the scooter for the most part and then use my wife's car um, you know when we need to but 
I don't know, like if I push that $3,000 limit a little bit, I just, I get a sense like that I should just buy a car, I guess is what I'm saying. So no, I don't, I don't really regret. And again, like I said, this is, this was like 2250 and out the door I was paying 27, 2800, right? So if I was going to spend, you know, 3300 out the door, my price is going to be closer to four or 4,500, you know? Because you're just going to have that same level of expense. And, you know, I'm going to get, I'm not going to say bad gas mileage, but worse gas mileage. That's going to increase your cost a little bit. The insurance is probably going to be a little bit more on a 125 versus a 50cc. So, I don't know, like, it's, it's a cost creep thing, too. So, the 50cc, no, I don't regret it because... I'm looking at practical, economical, you know, I've got my wife's car when we really need a car or when I need to use a car, but for 95% of the time, I'm good on a scooter and a 50 cc scooter is plenty good. You know, it's like the difference between a 50 cc and a 125 cc isn't enough for me to like take two days off on my weekend and, you know, do with these class and then, you know, deal with you know, the higher expenses, not just in mileage and, ins and insurance, Ugh. not just with mileage and insurance, but also, you know, the extra thousand or fifteen hundred that it might cost to get that scooter. So, you know, I'm looking at it really from a practical standpoint and it's like, this is paid off. I would have been still paying off that 125 CC and I would have been spending more money on that 125 CC. I'd be potentially taking more risk, you know, going out on the highways a little bit more. I don't know. I, I don't regret the 50 CC at all. Um, and again, I view it kind of now as like a sunk cost, like I'm in it. So now I better just stay with it. There's no point in switching because I'm just going to lose money, you know, then like I thought, Maybe I would keep this for a year and then next summer upgrade. And the more I think about it, it's like, why even do that? Because all I'm going to do is get an extra 10 miles an hour out of the 125. Like it's, it's going to go from 35 to 40 up to, you know, 50 ish, you know, like it's, it's not going to like make my life that much better. The acceleration on them isn't like that much crazier. You know, it's like, it's still a scooter um, so I don't know like I, I just think about it in a practical sense saving money and and all that stuff so um, if you've got money to burn and you've got your motorcycle license already then I would say yeah get the 125 CC you know but if you're like me who turned in your car lease and you were like hey I'm, I'm done with this you know expensive car I'm not gonna buy a car or lease a new car or you know I'm just done with the car and we'll just go down to one and then you need something a little bit extra to get chores done and you know today I ran to the post office and you know I went to Starbucks I went to the post office and I know it's not very exciting right but um, you know you you just get little things done on your scooter and you don't really have to you don't need a car for all that you know I go grocery shopping on my scooter all the time I go places just like now. I went to the mall on my scooter. So, unless you're traveling to a completely different city, I don't really even think most people need a car. You, you'd do fine on like a daily driver is what they call them, right? And that's probably what I'll do in the future, like going forward. I'll probably just always for the rest of my life, unless I get insane amounts of money, you know, just drive a kind of a beater car. Even if I had insane amounts of money, I don't, I'd probably feel like a jerk driving something that was over. I mean, what, you know, a lot of people buy now, like Teslas. I, I would not buy a Tesla personally. I just think it's a waste of money. Um, but yeah, so those are my thoughts. Like, I don't know. Some people are going to maybe regret it. I mean, I kind of thought that I was regretting the 50 cc in the beginning and i've heard a lot of people say that but in practical usage like getting around town like i've driven for the most part my radius around my home is the core radius is like two to four miles right so at most 80 percent of the time i'm going two to four miles away i'm not going anywhere that requires me to have a 125 or 250 cc and even when i've gone a little bit further like my video when i was taking the xfinity router in i think that was like 
you know, 10 minutes away, it was probably like a five or seven mile drive. You know, it was a little bit further than my normal radius, you know. Um, still, it doesn't really matter because, again, you're going on 35, 40 mile an hour roads and I can get to Chicago. Like, I'm 20 miles out of Chicago right now in the suburbs and I could still get to Chicago from here, you know, driving along Ogden Avenue and, like, you know, other roads um, just fine because most of those roads are again 30 35 40 there's nothing really special about them so is it going to take you an extra 15 minutes yeah but is it a big deal i don't think so you know because on 290 you're basically going bumper to bumper anyways on i-55 during certain parts of the day you're bumper to bumper anyways around midway like who cares you know at least i can feel the breeze and enjoy the outside get some sun you know so i don't know I don't know why you'd regret <coughs> why you'd regret having a bike that's completely paid off and I think you know if I bought another scooter I would I would I really only would need one I've seen some youtubers with like three bikes I don't understand that or my parents have a lot of bikes and I don't really understand that either um, but they have different types they have a scooter they have a ninja that was originally my brother's and they have a dirt bike that was kind of my brother's kind of not you know I don't know so I'm not trying to talk crap or anything I'm just saying like for me I only need one transportation thing so if I got a 250 cc or 125 cc I would get rid of this most likely um, you know I, I just only need one device to get around so that's where I'm at and you know I think once you go into like a motorcycle and you start dealing with like a chain and a clutch there's a lot more things that can go wrong on your device on your on your vehicle I don't want to deal with that I don't want to think about it I've driven a car for a long enough time you know 15 plus years I get it cars maintenance vehicles they cost money they break down they need repairs i want it to be as simple as possible and that's part of the appeal with a scooter the scooter is like so dead dead simple that you know i can basically maintain it myself between youtube university and just looking things up online and my father-in-law who seems to know you know enough about repairing these so i i just think you know why deal with the chain? Why deal with, you know, the the fancier electronics? Why deal with all that stuff that can potentially go wrong, right? Over time, I'm I'm sitting here on my $2,200 scooter, and you know the Kelly Blue Book value is $1,900. You know, it can't it can't even depreciate that fast because it's not it it wasn't that expensive to begin with, you know. Like the Kelly Blue Book is like amazing on 50cc scooters. At least the Zumas, what I've looked up, you know. So, I don't know. And, and I've seen used ones going for a heck of a lot more than I think they should even go for, you know. I've seen used 50cc scooters with like five to 8,000 miles for like 1,500 bucks. I would think that they would depre... And they're like five or seven years old. I would think that they would be less expensive, but you know, that's, that's what people are paying. So I just think that the resale value, you know, cause you don't need a motorcycle license. So therefore anybody can, you know, buy these things and drive them. Um, I just think it's a great transportation and you know, the motorcycle thing like looming over me, like some people even will confuse this for a motorcycle not a lot of people but younger people tend to like if i go through the drive through people go you need a motorcycle license for that and i'm like no this is a 50 cc and you don't need you know uh a motorcycle license in illinois for you know 50 cc scooters right 49 cc technically right and i don't know like i'm just pretty happy with the purchase like I just think about all the money that I'm saving. The only thing that I got to pay on this guy is insurance and gasoline. And gasoline is like $325 when I fill up because I buy the premium and I usually only get a gallon, right? It's about, it's a little over $3. So, um, you know, it's $3 and a quarter. So I, I don't know. I love it. I love it. And then when I think about insurance, like I bought 
I bought like crazy crazy insurance for this, okay? I bought like the 300,000 like all inclusive like 300,000 um umbrella insurance on this, you know, that that's like crosses all categories. I forget what that's called. And um I got the, you know, theft protection so they'll replace it, you know, if it gets stolen. I got the um the other thing in the insurance that I got was uh, if I get injured on the scooter, they'll pay me $250 a week um, if I can't work, and then up to $25K or something if I die on the scooter. So, you know, that goes to my wife. So, all these things, 300,000, you know, uh, coverage for insurance, and then the work benefit, the theft benefit, and the you know if i get injured benefit all those benefits and it's like 20 25 dollars a month i mean that's so cheap that's still that's still 25 percent of what i would normally pay for car insurance like for uh work i'm gonna pay my business partner's car insurance because it's a work vehicle and his his insurance is basically a hundred something dollars a month you know on a honda fit and it's like you know, that's a practical car too, but, um, you know, I just, I don't know, like, it's just so dang cheap, you know, it's so dang cheap to ride a scooter that I'm, I'm totally in. And, you know, I think about going up in CCs and I think about what's my insurance going to be, you know, what's my risk going to be, what's my mileage going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit bigger tank, a little bit less mileage per gallon. I don't know. I'm just happy with the purchase, you know, like there's no, there's no regret. I don't know. And in the winter, I'm planning to drive this thing through in the winter. And if I drive through on the winter, the faster I go, the colder I get, you know, I don't want it to be cold. So I'm going to slow down. I'm going to be driving slower probably in the winter on this thing, you know, if I can help it. So anyways... We're back home. I got to help my wife unload the car. I think her parents gave us some food or so there's some bags in her car that I got to unload. Anyways, thanks for watching. And if anybody has any questions, by the way, um, about owning a 50cc or what my experience has been like, I'm more than happy to, you know, talk about it at length, even though I probably mostly babble. But, you know, I really found that having a 50cc scooter or like when i was doing the research in the beginning i i subscribed to a lot of different channels to kind of figure out is this for me and you know nobody was really answering questions so i can see that as being valuable you know somebody wants to ask me a bunch of questions i'm totally cool with that um anyways thanks for watching guys have a good evening